Okay, in today's lesson, we're going to be looking at the graphs of y equal to f of x, or the modulo of f of x, and this is where f of x would be a quadratic function. So the standard form for a quad, uh, modular quadratic is y equal to the modular ax squared plus bx plus c, so very similar to a, a standard uh, quadratic function. And when we consider modular quadratic functions, the easy way to think about them is a quadratic function can have both positive and negative solutions, depending on the equation and how where its turning point is. And what we're saying is we want to consider the solutions of the quadratic that are positive and keep them positive, and we want to take the negative solutions and make the negative solutions positive. And when we make negative uh, solutions into positive solutions, we are basically just reflecting them about the x-axis, so the y equal to zero line, basically. So let's uh, consider a simple function y equal to the modular of x squared minus 2x minus 3. So the first step that we usually take when we want to graph these modular functions is let's just consider what the function x squared minus 2x minus 3 looks like. So we need to know certain pieces of information. So those would be the x-intercepts. We want to know the turning point, And we probably want to know the y-intercept as well. All right? And then we can sketch this function and then we can visually see which solutions are positive, which solutions are negative, and we can make the negative solutions positive. So let's first solve and find the x-intercepts. We can just factorize the function and we can get solutions at x equal to 3 and x equal to negative 1. Now we could either complete the square to find the turning points. Alternatively, if we have solutions, we can just think the turning point is always going to be right in between, in other words, the midpoint of the two uh, solutions. So we can consider the, where is the midpoint between 3 and negative 1. So we'll take 3, we'll add negative 1, and we can divide by 2, and that's going to give us 1. Now we can just take our value 1, substitute it back into the original equation, and we can find the uh, value at x equal to 1. So that'll be 1 squared minus 2 minus 3. That's going to give us negative 4. So in other words, we have a turning point at x equal to 1, y equal to minus 4. So in this parabola, we would have a minimum value at negative 4. Okay, finally, we want the y-intercept. The y-intercept we can visually see is just negative 3. So if we had to graph this now on the axis, on the Cartesian plane, we would have something that looks similar to this. We have solutions at negative 1 and 3, and we can see we have a part of the parabola below the x-axis, and it has a turning point of negative 1, or sorry, 1, negative 4. Now, the absolute value, we don't want to consider these negative solutions. In fact, what we want to do is we want to consider only positive solutions. And so we can see that we have positive solutions greater than 3, when x is greater than 3, and when x is less than negative 1. But between negative 1 and 3, we have all these negative solutions. And quite simply, when we consider absolute value or modular, we just want to take these negative solutions and make them positive. And so we're taking all the y coordinates at a specific x coordinate and just changing them into the positive side. And effectively what we are doing is we are reflecting about the x-axis. So to demonstrate this visually, we can just flip the parabola over because this is what a reflection looks like. You can change the color just to show the, the, the difference graphs. And this is Essentially what we've done is we've actually just considered the negative version of the, the parabola. So we've taken x squared minus 2x minus 3 and we've reflected it. So we've taken all the values and we've made them minus. And so we've ended up with a new function minus x squared plus 2x plus 3. Right, so we can get rid of all these negative solutions now because we don't want them. We only want the positive solutions we can
Okay, so these are the two equations that we've now considered, right? We've actually sketched the graph of x squared minus 2x minus 3, and we've sketched the graph of y equal to minus x squared plus 2x plus 3. And we've only sketched the parts of these graphs that give us positive solutions, because effectively that's what modular function is all about. So here we have the function y equal to the modular x squared plus 4x minus 12. We can visually see we have some intercepts, we have a turning point, etc. And what we want to look at is for possible solutions of this function at certain values. Okay? So perhaps we are asked to find the number of solutions that this function has for any given value. And what we'll do is we'll denote this value with a letter and we'll just say it's k. So if you assume k is a variable, or not a variable, sorry, but a constant number, if we consider what modular functions are, we know that k has to be greater than or equal to zero because modular cannot be negative. All right, so whatever this number is, it needs to be a positive number. Now, visually, what we're asking for is when the y equal to k line is equal to this function, and if we could draw that graphically, we could draw that as a straight line from left to right, and k is just a variable that we could change, and as we change the variable, we would move this line up and down. And as you can see, as we move it up and down, the number of points that they, we intersect changes, right? And this is what we want to consider, because these are the number of solutions. So let's look at the number of solutions for different values of k, right? So let's consider when k is equal to 0. So if we said k was equal to 0, you can see the only two points that we have are the two intercepts. So if our modular function has intercepts, so when k is equal to 0, we would have two solutions. Now, as we move the line up, you can see between two between 0, sorry, and all the way up to this turning point here, but not at the turning point, any value below the turning point and between the intercepts, we're going to get four solutions. So on our function between 0 and 16, but not including 16, we will have four solutions. All right, let's consider at this turning point, this stationary point. At that stationary point, Theoretically, we do have four solutions. However, two of the solutions are the same. They're going to be at negative two. So what we can say is that at k equal to 16, we have four solutions, but because two are the same, we'll just say we have three. And from that point on, as we go higher than 16, we can see from there onwards, we'll only have two solutions again. So when k is greater than 16, we'll only have two solutions. So graphically, we can see those. Now, if we wanted to work out those solutions, especially at k equal to 16, we can see we have three solutions, and we, we know then that we need to go and find those. All right, and below that, we would have four, and at the intercepts, two. So let's think about how we would solve this algebraically. Okay, so algebraically, what's happening is we are considering when y equals to k for two separate quadratics technically. So we have the positive quadratic, right? And then we have the negative quadratic that we have only considered its possible solution, positive solution. So here's the positive quadratic, right? We've discarded the part of that quadratic underneath the x-axis because they are negative. And this is its reflection the negative version of that quadratic, and then we've only considered its positive solutions. So we need to look at both of these quadratic functions at 16. For instance, say we want to find the values at when k is equal to 16, we need to consider both of these functions to find those solutions. Graphically, if we wanted to consider solutions, a number for k greater than 16, so say we said for 18 or 19 or 20, you could see we have two solutions and we are only intersecting the positive quadratic, so the negative quadratic wouldn't give us any solutions, and so we could discard it. Or if we weren't aware that there were no, uh, only two solutions, uh, we would... Uh, we would work that out when we try to solve the quadratic, we would get uh, undefined solutions. 
So let's find these values at 16. So let's say when the modular function is equal to 16. So that would be represented as x squared plus 4x minus 12 equal to 16, right? So we need to consider both the positive and the negative versions. So let's start with the positive, x squared plus 4x minus 12 equals 16, and we'll just solve, and the same on the other side, x squared, this time we have negative x squared plus 4, oh, sorry, negative 4x plus 12 equals 16, and we'll just solve as normal. So here we'll have minus 32, 28, sorry. And here we will have x squared plus 4x. We'll take that to the other side. We'll get plus 4 equal to 0. Um, on this side over here, I can either complete the square or I can use the formula. I'm going to complete the square. So x plus 2 squared minus 2 squared minus 28 equal to 0. That's going to give me x plus 2 squared equal to, I'll have 32 on the other side x plus 2 is equal to the square root of 32, plus or minus, sorry, because we want both positive and negative solutions. And so x is equal to, if we pull out the factors, this will be plus or minus 4 square root 2 minus 2. So those are my two solutions from the positive quadratic. And we can visually see those if we move our line back to what k equal to 16. So that would be this solution over here and that solution over there. Okay, let's work on the other one. And here we're going to get uh, x plus 2, x plus 2 equal to 0. So x must be equal to negative 2. So you can see we get two of the same solution. That's why we just consider them as one solution. Okay, and that can be visually represented here as a solution at negative 2. So that's a look at how we can graphically look at different solutions at certain values or how we could find them algebraically.